Hello. Rational people make decisions at the margin. They compare the marginal benefit to the marginal cost when they make a choice. But the true cost of something is more than the monetary price. It includes all the things that we give up. For many activities, one of the most important things that we have to add to the monetary price is the risk associated with that activity. Hence, the true price of something is the monetary price plus the risk. And the risk is measured by the probability of a bad event happening when you engage in the activity. For example, if we inject ourselves with drugs, there is a probability of contracting a disease. That's the risk. If we decide to drive a motorcycle, there is a probability of a deadly accident. That is the risk. When we think about making choices, we have to think about all the factors. Now, we also know that the law of demand says that when the price of something decreases, we do more of that activity. The law of demand applies to the true price, of course, so that even if the monetary price stayed the same, if the risk were to, say, decrease, we would expect people to do more of that activity. This notion can be seen in these diagrams. Here we have that the demand for the activity depends on the monetary price plus the risk. Here we have that if we keep the monetary price, then the demand depends on the risk of the activity only. And once again, we see that when the risk decreases, the demand or the quantity demanded of this activity increases. Now, if we understand these things, we can start to think about many poly issues like a true economist. In particular, we begin to realize that policies have secondary effects or maybe even unintended consequences. What do I mean by that? Well, I think we all would agree that when you lower the price of an ice cream, there will be two effects. The first effect, or the direct effect, is that when the price of ice cream goes down, the revenue per ice cream decreases. So that effect says that revenue will go down. The secondary effect is that when the price of ice cream is lower, by the law of demand, more ice creams will be sold. But when you sell more ice cream, you're going to have more revenue. So this secondary effect says that revenue will go up. So the question is, when you lower the price of ice cream, does revenue increase or decrease? Well, it depends. On what? Well, it depends on the price elasticity of demand. Is demand for ice cream elastic or is the demand for ice cream inelastic? In this diagram, we can see the demand for ice cream, and we also note that the revenue, which is equal to the price times the quantity, which is given by the rectangular area under the price line, and we see that if the price decreases from P1 to P2, we lose the blue area of revenue. This is revenue per ice cream sold. But we gain the red area because we sell more ice creams. Hence, whether revenue decreases or increases depends on the relative size of the red and blue areas. If the red area is greater than the blue area, total revenue will increase. We would say that we have elastic demand. But if the blue area is greater than the red area, total revenue would decrease. And we would say we have inelastic demand. All right. Let's think about another example. Let's think about motorcycles and the number of deadly accidents. Here in Michigan, you can drive a motorcycle without a helmet. Naturally, every year there are deadly accidents involving motorcycles. The question is, if we want to reduce the number of deadly accidents, should we make a law that requires the use of a helmet when driving a motorcycle? What do you think? Well, the way to think about it is this. If you wear a helmet, then the risk of a deadly accident falls. The true 
price or the true cost of driving a motorcycle decreases. But when people feel safer, they change their behavior. They will drive more, they will drive faster, they will drive less carefully. And more reckless motorcycle driving will increase the number of accidents. So will requiring a helmet decrease or increase deadly accidents in Michigan? Well, it depends. It depends on the risk elasticity of the demand for reckless driving. Here we see that deadly accidents is made up of the product between the risk per accident, which decreases when wearing a helmet, and the number of accidents, which increases with reckless driving. So the bottom line then becomes whether we'll have more or fewer deadly accidents depends on whether wearing a helmet increases reckless driving only a little bit or whether reckless driving will increase a lot. It depends on the risk elasticity or the price elasticity of the demand for reckless driving. The concept of price elasticity is everywhere. And it's very important for you to understand this concept when you make decisions in your own life or when you consider policy choices. It is important to realize once again that the overall effect depends on both a direct effect and a secondary effect. And we have to make sure that the secondary effect doesn't offset the direct effect to make sure that we don't have unintended consequences when we make our choices.